everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Metcast Movie Journal. This is the show where I do quick reviews for the movies that I watch, give them a score out of 10, and then add them to my list. So let's see what movie we're reviewing today. On March 18th, I watched The Sitter, which came out in 2011. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Comedy and drama are the two most difficult genres to try and blend effectively in a movie. But for some reason, this formula of having the crazy, inappropriate adult forced to look after a group of equally offensive young kids seems to be a good way to do it. The original Bad News Bears with Walter Matthau might be the true original version of this setup. And Bad Words with Jason Bateman is easily the highest rated film on my list that uses it. But sadly, The Sitter doesn't quite live up to either of those two. Still, it carves out its own nice little niche in the formula, and it helps to elevate what might otherwise have been another generic Jonah Hill comedy. The story is simple enough, with Hill's character Noah being forced to babysit a group of three kids, each of course having their own unique personal problems that Noah can help them work through over the course of their crazy night together. It's sort of a movie most of us have already seen in one form or another. It almost feels like something that could have been written for an assignment in a scriptwriting class focused on character growth and completing satisfying arcs. The three kids' problems are all super cliché, too, which only accentuates this feeling. The youngest girl, Blythe, played by Landry Bender, is dealing with image problems, covering herself up in a ridiculous amount of makeup for a girl her age. Rodrigo, played by Kevin Balmore, is the middle child, adopted from El Salvador, and his character probably wouldn't pass the PC board of approval today, because it seems like a pretty cheap stereotype, if not just outright racist, to have him portraying the scary Latino who likes to burn things and blow stuff up. And the oldest child, Slater, played by Max Records, is struggling to come to terms with his sexuality. Obviously, his arc provides the most serious and emotional moments in the movie, but still, all three kids' problems are essentially solved with a couple minutes' worth of conversation at the end of the night, and it's all just a bit too easy. The most annoying thing for me in this movie, though, is probably a weird thing to complain about, but Slater's character is constantly being mentioned as this amazingly attractive young boy who's constantly fending off every girl in town due to his insane hotness. So when the character, when the actor cast looks like a young Paul Dano, it's distracting. This problem exists in a lot of different forms too, because it's a big pet peeve of mine in TV shows, when they start making fat jokes about a character like Elaine in Seinfeld, or Monica in Friends, when they're already real thin. And it's the same thing here. It just pulls me out of the story when what's being said doesn't match up with what my eyes are seeing. I don't mean to rip on the kid too much, he's not ugly. He's just not Zac Efron, which is clearly what they're going for in the script. Child actors are usually a bit of a weak link in movies, and Kevin Balmore can't do much with his limited character. Max Records probably had a little too much on his plate, and it showed in my opinion. So honestly, I think Landry Bender did the best of the three, but her part was also probably the easiest, so it's tough to judge. I think the opinions on this one will most directly tie to people's opinions of Jonah Hill, since this seemed to be written specifically for him. It's very much a Jonah Hill vehicle type movie. So if you already don't like Jonah Hill, this one probably won't be worth your time. It definitely won't win any awards, but I like Jonah Hill well enough, so this was an easy one to watch. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 10, and it landed at number 1033 on my list, putting it right here, in between Universal Soldier and Underwater. Thanks for, Thanks watching. for watching another edition of Metcalf's Movie Journal. Be sure to click like and subscribe for new videos every week. And if you have a movie that you really want me to watch, be sure to drop me a comment.